All right, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, humbly we come to you in prayer, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to study a portion of your word. Father, we just pray, Lord, your spirit be with us, Father, that you give us a discernment and an understanding, Lord, to understand the times that we are living in. Father, we pray for a humble spirit before you, Father, that your word may fall on good ground, Lord, and make a difference in our lives, Lord, especially in these last and evil days, Lord. We just want to thank you for all you've done for us. Lord, if it's your will, continue to be blessed. If your will be done. Jesus, now we pray. Amen. 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 So um, let me say this as we begin, you know, um, I just want to be sensitive to um, the fact that, you know, in our Bible study, we have a lot of people that's at a different uh, level or different level of understanding in their faith. Um, and so I'll be kind of going slow because we'll be dealing with a lot of prophecy and prophecy can, can be difficult to understand because you know, those of you that have studied it before, you know, you got to do a lot of praying on it and wait for God to give you some discernment and you can't just read it and get it sometimes. Um, but, you know, the clues that we do have, we'll use. Um, but the thing about prophecy is, um, and that's why we're going to start with Matthew 22. It's going to be talking about how in the last days, nobody will care. Nobody will have time to hear from God. But when you know God, how many of you know God reveals things to his people that he can reveal to everybody else? Have, have, have y'all started to, any of you guys started to experience that where God can reveal things to you, maybe through a dream or through something you experienced at work? Amen. Okay, Amen. so we're going to start with Matthew 22. Um just read verse one through three first, Brother Ben. Yes, sir. Jesus also told them other parables. He said, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a king who prepared a great wedding feast for his son. When the banquet was ready, he sent his servants to notify those who were invited, but they all refused to come. So y'all, how many of us on here really want to go to heaven? I'm sure all of us do, right? Yes, sir. Amen. Okay, amen. And so I want y'all to pay attention to this parable. It's not a true story, but this is an illustration of a story that is trying to paint a, a bigger picture on what it's going to be like when it's time to go to heaven. And it says that in verse 2, that the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a king who has prepared a great wedding feast for his son. Y'all, the son is Jesus. Okay? Who is the bride? Us. And when the banquet was ready, when the father had everything ready, he sent his servants to notify the people that were being invited to the wedding, right? He said, but what? <laughs> All of them refused to come. Y'all check out these next verses. Read the next three verses, Brother Ben. So he sent other servants to tell them, the feast has been prepared. The bulls and fattened cattle have been killed and everything is ready. Come to the banquet. But the guests... He had invited, ignored them, and went their own way. One to his farm, another to his business. Others seized his messengers and insulted them and killed them. Y'all, can we relate to those verses? He said, the king invited them to come to this wedding. He said, but the problem was, he said, but the problem was this. The guests ignored them, and they went their own way. He said some people went to their farm. That would be like some people went home to mind their business, and other people went to mind their business, well, to go to their businesses, their jobs, and stuff like that. How many of us know what it's like to be so busy with our jobs and what we got going on at home that we didn't know a God? A lot of people are like that, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Amen. And then he said, then there was another group of people that actually attacked the people that was out inviting people to the wedding. Amen. How many of y'all have trained to witness to people and get them to come to Jesus, but they get mad at us talking about they don't want to hear that? Amen. So come on, pick up at verse number seven, Brother Ben, and come down to 10. Yes, sir. The king was furious, and he sent out his army to destroy the murderers and burn, the, burn their town. And he said to his servants, the wedding feast is ready, and the guests I invited aren't worthy to, of the honor. Now go out to the street corners and invite everyone you see. 
So the servants brought in everyone they could find, good and bad alike. The banquet hall was filled with guests. Wow. So what was the king's mentality about the people that wouldn't come? He said he was highly upset. So he sent out his army to destroy, amen, to destroy those. And he said to his servant, he said, now look, the wedding feast is ready. The guests that I invited, he said, they unwork, they're not worried of the honor. He said, now I want you to go out to the street corners and invite who? Everybody you see. Yeah. Now here's what I want you to know. How many of us on here are still being invited? And how many of us are doing the inviting? Amen. I'm trying to do the inviting. Amen. You want to be in a position to do the inviting. Amen. So watch this. So the servants brought in everyone they could find, good and bad alike. Didn't make no difference. And the banquet hall was filled with guests. So watch this. Come on, brother, brother Ben, pick up 11. But when the king came in to meet the guests, he noticed a man who wasn't wearing the proper clothes for a wedding. Friend, he asked, how is it that you, were, that you are here without wedding clothes? But the man had no reply. Then the king said to his aides, bind his hands and his feet and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Y'all listen. So we had a group of people that God was up with, the king was upset with because they didn't come. And now we have a group of people that came. They actually, they're at the feast. But as the king is going and walking amongst the guests that's at the feast, right? He said he noticed a man who wasn't wearing the proper clothes for the wedding. He didn't have on wedding garments. How many of y'all know what was wrong with his clothes? If y'all would, you you remember Brother Shaw when he got thrown in out of darkness for? No, so I don't remember that one. You remember the story um, about they said that the man, the master had to go away and he gave one of his servants five talents. He gave another servant two talents. Oh yeah, you remember the that one? Five and he gave the one, ten one talent. and the five and one. The five, the two, and the one. And remember the five and the two said that they went and invested their talents. Yeah, they came back with double, right? Yes, sir. Lazy. That's correct. Yeah. Yes, sir. That's correct. But the one that he gave one, remember, he buried he that. in the yeah, ground. Yeah, he sat on it. Yeah, uh -huh. yes, sir. They didn't do nothing with it. Didn't huh. it? And remember, he said, you wicked and you lazy servant. If you yep. would have invested what I gave you, you knew I was going to get what I was going to get anyways. He said, I would have gotten that plus interest. Plus, because you didn't do nothing with what I gave you. Take this one and cast them into outer darkness. Yeah. So now we got one that was cast into outer darkness because they didn't change, Brother Shad. And now, and now we got another person thrown into the same outer darkness because they didn't do anything with what God had given them. Yep. Yeah. Now, why am I stressing this? This is a parable and it's also prophetic. It is trying to paint a, a simple picture for us so that we can understand in a way what going or not going to heaven will be like in a simple way. But it is prophetic. Amen. Yes, sir. Is that we all on the same page? That's fair? Oh yeah. Okay. So let's 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 go into a little bit deeper stuff. Let's go over to uh, Daniel chapter 12. And I'll put it back in the uh, King James, once we get there. And if you don't mind, Brother Ben, let's do, let's start with verse number one through three. It's some stuff we need to just kind of pull out right there. Yes, sir. And at the time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time, and at that time, thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness 
of the firmament, and they that turn many of, to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. All right. Okay, so I was kind of doing two things at once. So let's pull out a couple of things here, brothers and sisters, that I want us to see. This is prophetic, okay? Meaning it's 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 talking about then, but it's also foretelling the future of, of where we are. I'm trying to stretch the screen so we can see it. He said, at that time shall Michael stand up the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble. Hasn't happened yet, but there shall be a time of trouble. Such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. Okay, so here, y'all, it doesn't tell us how serious this time of trouble is going to be, but we do know it's going to be a time of trouble as never before. And he says, and at that time, thy people shall be what? Delivered. Everyone that shall be found written where? In the book. Which book is that, Brother Ben? The book, the of, book what? of life. Do we all want our name in the book of life? Yes, Amen. Sir. Amen. If our name is found in the book of life, that means we, we will inherit eternal life. Amen. Is that right? Yes. Oh, yeah. But now what I want y'all to take note of, I just I'm slowing down. And I'm like I said, I'm doing it. I'm trying to do it in a way that no matter where you are in your faith, you can understand this. This is also telling us that if our name is found in the book of life, brothers and sisters, and we are alive during the end times, that sister Felicia, that means we're gonna have a target on our back. Amen. Hey, okay, everybody. That means you'll have a target on your back if your name is in the book of life. That means that when you got storms coming up in your life out of nowhere and you know you've been living right, know you are falling under the same category as Job. Your name has come up. Yeah. That makes sense, brother? And so, and he says in this, verse 2, he says, and many of them that are asleep, that have gone to sleep, that have died in the dust of the earth shall awake. He said, now some of them are going to wake up to everlasting life. That's where we all want to be. And some of them to shame and everlasting contempt. That's where we don't want to be. But in verse 3, it says, now they that are smart are wise, good sense as we call it, okay? They shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, like a star, y'all. What should make them so bright, Sister Felicia? It says that they that turn many to what? Righteousness. Righteousness. So, y'all, what kind of lifestyle do these people have? A righteous, holy lifestyle. Y'all, these are people... This talking about us that are doing the work or trying to get people to stop living a life of sin, but to start living a life of what's pleasing to God. Has anybody ever attempted to do that? Amen. I, yes, I know you all do. The time. I was just about to say, Sister Felicia, I know you try with your family all the time. And Sister Felicia, would you say that this is a challenging job? Oh, yes. It ain't a lot of people signing up and putting in applications for this job, is it? Not at all. Now listen to me, brothers and sisters. I don't, because I, I can't see your faces. I don't know if you're frowning, you sleep, or whatever. What I'm trying to tell you is, we all <laughs> want to go to heaven, right? Right. But you know the people. I'm gonna know that the people that are going to heaven, y'all. They were doing a work, just like the, the king sent the servants out to bring people to the wedding. They, if you're not doing a work for God, brothers and sisters, if you are just existing, your day may be short. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we have to do more than just getting Jesus for ourselves because... That's really where a lot of people are at, you know. I'm good. I didn't win, got my word. I ain't worried about nobody else, you know. So. Yes. Y'all remember the scripture? I don't remember what book it's in, y'all. It might be Luke or somewhere. Um, maybe one of the books, but I know it was when um, Jesus was dealing with Peter. And he remember he told him, he told him that the devil want to sift you like wheat. But the, the most powerful words he said, Brother Shaw, was, after you have been what? Converted. Do what? 
strengthen the brother. So mm. y'all watch this. That scripture that I just quoted is in this right here. You can't turn nobody to righteousness if you haven't been converted to righteousness. Mm. Amen. That's the truth, yeah. You 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 get out there trying to win somebody out of their sin, and they end up winning you into sin. Because they're, because they're more rooted in their sin than you are in your Jesus. Why am I stressing this, Brother Shaw? Listen to y'all, brother, now. You know, I always compare it to orientation. A lot of times we think our change, our overcoming sin, is our ticket into heaven. It's, it's a part of our ticket. But that is basically the orientation that we must all go through in order to be used by God. We still have to spread our testimony, right, and try to convert more people, right? Yes, sir, but short. And here's the thing. You getting control over your sin, and I don't mean like you don't still have an urge to sin, but I'm saying like you know, people seeing you start to have more self-control especially from the things that you used to struggle with. Your lifestyle is a testimony to them that they can too. That's your testimony. You know what I mean? When they know you come from clearing the streets and and and, and you peaceable now, you, you, you're a big teddy bear now, they like, man, you know what I'm saying? Something done changed, man. And that's a testimony. Your, your character is speaking for itself, is witnessing for you. But it also puts you in position for people to listen to who changed you. Yeah. That's why conversion is necessary. Yes, ma'am, Sister Levine. Oh, it's me on that one. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, but, um, I think one of the biggest things that we're saying on that is understanding the need to change. Because so many of us are being told that well, God loves you and Jesus paid it all, and it doesn't it's not it doesn't take all that. So when it comes down to doing what God wants us to do to the fullest, we have to look past when people are telling us to not change, but just be who you are, come as you are, and just let that be it. But don't yes. leave as you came, though. Amen. Amen, my brother. So true, y'all. It's good, there, bro. So watch this, brother Ben. If you don't mind, brother, come down. Start at four. And come on down to six. Yes, sir. <clears throat> but thou, o Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there stood two, stood other two, the one on this side of the bank of the river. And the other on that side of the bank. Side of the bank. And okay. one stared to the to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river. How long shall it be to the end of those or though these wonders? Go ahead and read verse seven. And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven and swear by him that liveth forever that it shall be for a time, times, and half, and when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. Okay, so I'm going to try to do two things at once. I'm going to try to help you guys learn how to study prophecy. Um, and like I said, with prophecy, a lot of it is discernment, which is a gift from God. And it takes a lot of study. A lot of it is just revealed over time. But one thing I want y'all to know is when y'all read prophetic things, a lot of times, even though you can't understand, like in this scripture that we're reading right now, it says, and I'm going to see, we started at verse four. So watch this, y'all. It says, but you, O Daniel, shut up the word words and seal the book, even till the time of the end. So that gives us a hint that this is talking about the end, all right? It says, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Watch this, y'all. It says, then I, Daniel, and where is Daniel at at this time? Daniel is, is Persia has taken over. Um, you know, Daniel was a prophet under Babylon, but he went in un, as they converted over into Persia. So this is during the Persian time, and God is giving Daniel a vision, okay? And he says, then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there stood other two, 
the one on one side of the bank of the river and the other on the other side of the bank of the river. And here's what happens to a lot of people when they read this, y'all. They'll go and hours up on hours trying to find out what river. It's irrelevant. That's not the point. There it is. Amen. This is how you can get caught up in foolish arguments so easily with people. Yes. What river it was is irrelevant. That's not the point. And no, this is a vision that God is showing Daniel. It's like people will say, I had a dream or God showed me something. This is a vision God is showing Daniel. So watch this in verse six. And he says, and so as he's seeing this vision, he says, one said to the man that was clothed in linen, who knows what linen is symbolic of in the Bible? If you studied the sanctuary, who had the word linen? The priest. The priest. The, uh, yeah. And why were the, they giving um, such garments? What was the ephod and stuff them? like that? Yes. And what was it? It was it was it was a it was considered a holy and a clean garment. Mm. So this just gives us a sign of this ain't nobody working for the devil. He's seen. We, you may not never know who it was. It's just a vision. The point is, you just get context. So he says, I seen a man clothed in linen. One, I'm sorry, one said to the man clothed in linen, which was up on the waters of the river. Who remembers in Revelations what the waters were symbolic of? You have to pull this from the beast lesson. Those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, just write down notes. Where were the waters, mother? Boy, you own it, mama. Y'all hear what she said? What she said? She said the waters were symbolic of the people and the multitudes. Mm -hmm. Y'all, if you haven't heard this, it's okay. We got a seminar coming up. Make sure you pay attention in the beast lesson. Um, I don't have to, I we don't have enough time for me to give y'all all of the little hints, but let me do this real quick. What is all symbolic of, y'all? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Okay. If you're hearing this for the first time, it's okay. Just write it down. Um, there's plenty of other studies we do where you'll get it, but if you know this stuff, you can get a little more. What is wine symbolic of, y'all? Jesus' blood. Blood, amen. And the blood is symbolic of what? Life. Very good, very good. Um, sometimes, guys, we'll see the Bible use trees as, as a... People. People, very good, Sister Felicia. Uh, I was trying to see if I can think of anything else. Uh, I, if I see another one, I'll tell you. So we're going to move on, but y'all get the point. Okay, so watch this. So uh, verse number six, one said to the man clothed in linen, which was up on the waters of the river, how long shall it be to the end of these wonders? This is the point. This is the powerful question. How long shall it be to the end of these wonders? Daniel is getting insight on this. He's seeing a vision. He's seeing a conversation between these three men or three beings, if you will. So verse number seven says, and I heard the man that was clothed in linen. Daniel said, I heard this man, which was up on the waters of the river. And he says, and when this man held his up his right and his left hand toward the sky, and swear by him that liveth forever. So who did he swear by, y'all? He swore by Jesus. Now, why is this powerful? Jesus hasn't come yet. Amen. Amen. So he says, it shall be forever that it shall be for a time, times, and a half. I don't know what time, time, and a half is, y'all. I'm still trying to figure it out. But it still don't stop you from learning something. Watch this. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of who? The holy place. Of the holy people. Then what? All these, All these things shall be finished. Now, what can we put together? This prophecy been telling us this is about the end times. And now we have another piece that says, after the holy people have been what? Yeah. Scouts. The great father. Y'all got it? Mm -hmm. Amen. So we know it's coming a time, y'all, during the end times, that God's people are going to be scattered. Does that kind of sound like when he said 
that uh, I pray your flight be not on the Sabbath. And if, if you're on the rooftop, don't go back in. And if you're in the field, don't go back to your house. In other words, room. Mm -hmm. Sound familiar? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So watch this. Come on, Brother Ben. Pick up at verse number eight. Um, let's just come on down to 13 and we'll come back up. Yes, sir. Okay. And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, oh, my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed to the time of the end. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, there shall be a thousand... 290 days. Mm. Blessed is he that waited and cometh to the, un, to the thousand, 305 and 30, 30 days. Mm -hmm. But go thy way till the end be, for thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days. Okay, so let's walk through this, y'all. Look how beautiful this is. So Daniel saw this vision. He heard this conversation. And look what he says in verse 8, Sister Felicia. He says, and I heard, but what? I didn't understand it. <laughs> Y'all get that? Daniel saw it, he heard it, but he couldn't get it himself. <laughs> he says, for the words, I'm sorry, it went too fast. And he said, then he said, I, oh my Lord, what shall the end of these things be? And he, and he said, go thy way, Daniel. This is God talking to Daniel. He said, Daniel, go your way. For the words are what? Closed up and sealed till when? The end of time. Wow, y'all, are we living in the last days near the end of time? <laughs> yes, sir. And this was long ago. This is long ago. This is before Jesus came. This is even before Greece takes over. This is before Rome takes over. This is way back, right? So watch this. Look what he said. Now, look what he did tell us. God said to Daniel in verse 10, many shall be what? Purified. Purified. Many people are going to be changed. And mm -hmm. made white and what? Right. Try and then, tried again. You're going to be tried. Who said you weren't going to suffer? And, what, <laughs> and when is this going to be, Brother Shaw? During the end times. Right? But the wicked shall what? Do wickedly. Come on, brother. And what else? And none of the wicked shall what? Understand. understand. But the who? But the wise, wise shall understand. understand. Why is it the wise will understand, but the wicked won't? What did it tell us the people that was wise was doing during the last days? Y'all remember? Turning people to righteousness. You better talk, sis. Mm -hmm. I see it. I got a million dollar question for you. Those of you that are trying to turn people to righteousness, I only want maybe two or three ounces. What are you learning from the experience? You can't you can't pull no scripture for this. This is from the experience. What are you learning? I'm, I'm learning. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. I just want two or three. Raise your hand. Go ahead and go, Mother Bobby. You know you the boss lady. What you got for us? <laughs> People are not gonna want to be telling the righteousness, they're gonna rebel. You learned that firsthand, didn't you, Mama? Mm -hmm. Amen. So mm -hmm. true. Mama said she has learned that a lot of people don't want righteousness. The more she tried to win people to do right, the more she learned they don't want righteousness. And if they don't want righteousness, that means they really don't want Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Uh, Brother Johnny, go ahead. I see that even just telling the truth and people just even telling the truth, it just hurts when you tell people the truth. Don't nobody mm -hmm. want to hear the truth. They want to, they want to hear what they want to hear. I've learned that for myself. And it's almost, I have to watch myself because it'll drive me crazy sometimes. Like, man, I'm on, look, man, I'm showing you this and I'm trying to paint examples for people, but folks just don't be wanting it. Okay. Give me two more. I saw you, Sister Wanisia, and uh, you, Sister Trudy. Go ahead. I learned from me and my experience that a lot of people get comfortable living how they've been living. And I mean, people who have been in church for a very long time. 
Like when I talk to people, I notice that there are some people who on surface level, they seem super righteous. Like they seem like, oh my gosh, these are very godly people. But the more I talk to them or the more that I listen to them talk, Mm -hmm. then they start to reveal their actual heart and they start to reveal that, okay, these people believe that, okay, I've been walking with God, so I don't, certain habits I have, I don't have to change anymore. And they get comfortable in their sin and they get to a point where their conscience is just, I don't know what's going on. It's just wax cold to where Yes, mm-hmm. it's like you can't tell them. It's like they feel like, no, I've been doing this a long time. God has been blessing me and I've been going to church. I've been doing this. So I feel like that the things that I haven't been doing right, no, I think that God approves of it. Wow, very good. Very good. Come on, Sister Trudy. I noticed that they watch you to see if you actually live in it before you can even tell them anything. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Very good. You better believe it. You better believe it. What you got, Sister Felicia? They are set in their own ways and have their own original beliefs and don't want to switch to believing that Jesus is the Son of God. Yes, ma'am. Sound like you and Sister Wendisha are talking to the same people. (laughs) (laughs) Come on, Brother Shaw. What you got? Then we're going to move. Hey, yeah. uh... Yeah, man, it's just it's just people don't want to hear like the wrong that they're doing. They don't want to they don't want to be told like uh you know fornicating bad, or they don't want to be told getting drunk is bad, or steadily going to parties is bad. You know, they just so stuck in the way that they was living that they don't want to that they don't want to get out of. It. Amen. You know? and that's just. Amen. And that's that's what I say is like the hardest part of trying to uh, tell people about God. Even when you tell them your testimony, Amen. you know, they just be like, man, I don't know you. So why should I listen to you? You know, and you know what scared me? You know what scared me even more, Brother Shaw? Watch this. I've heard all of you guys give y'all testimony that are similar, but yet different. And you know what I know? Y'all not all talking to the same people. Do you know why that scares me? Because I know that means it's the same spirits working in different people. See, I, I, I that, that makes sense. I mean, this is a spiritual battle because it's no way y'all talking to different people seeing the same issue unless it's a spirit moving in this world. Yeah. Hey, bro. Yeah. Come on, mama. Then we're going to move. Come on, mama. Man. Okay, I ain't got but one thing to say. This is what they'll tell you. The Lord know what my heart is. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord know my That's what they'll tell you. Mama, I, I even heard that quote in Chinese before. <laughs> when, I say, when I tell you, everybody said, I mean, everybody said it. Yeah, you, yeah, I think you, she won the million dollars, pal. Yeah, okay. you know where your heart is. Yes, yeah. that's so right. So, So watch this. Let's move, y'all. This is verse number 11. It says, and from that time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away. Y'all know last week, I was just showing y'all that eventually the daily sacrifice becomes us. Remember? When we talk about us being sheep for the slaughter and all of those things. Yes, that we have to, yeah, our reasonable sacrifices for Amen. us. Daily. Y'all remember that? We the daily sacrifice. Now, he says that from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away hmm. and the abomination that make it desolate set up, that's talking about tribulation. Don't worry about those all those years because the years don't change the game. It might, it might help you have a better time stamp, but what good would it be to know the time and you ain't on the wild side. Hmm. That's why I say when you're reading prophecy, get the point first, and then if you want to go back and try to figure out what's the time, times, times, see, that would be knowledge that just puff up. It's the whether Amen. or not it's on the side and how he this thing going to go down is most important. Amen? So watch this. Blessed is he that what? Waiteth. And come into the tent to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. But go thy way till what? 
The end. Mm-hmm. Y'all remember talk about days that in those that endure until when? The end. The end. That's what he's telling them. Go your way, the way I sent you until the end. You hold on, you wait, you stand still in the Lord. You stay converted until the end. For you shall what? Rest. And what? Stand in thy lot at the end of the days. You're going to stand in your portion in the end of days if you endure to the end. See, Daniel is saying the same thing a different way, y'all. But what he just gave us insight is it's going to be a time of trouble for God's people. They're going to scatter God's people. So let's go over to Daniel chapter 8. This adds on to um, the daily sacrifice being cut off. And I got something I want to show y'all that's worldly history right now to kind of help tie into what I can see is going on. I know you guys have things that you're seeing as well. Um, Brother Ben, let's read verses 9 through 13 if you don't mind. This is Daniel 8 in verse number 9, brothers and sisters. And out of, out of the one of them came forth a little horn, which waxed exceedingly great toward the south and toward the east and toward the pleasant land. And it waxed great even to the host of heaven. And it cast down some of the host and of the stars to the ground and stamped upon them. Yea, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host. And by him, the daily sacrifice was taken away, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. And and an host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression, and it cast down the truth. I go too fast. Can you see it? To the ground, and it practiced and prospered speaking. And another saint said unto that certain saint which spake, How long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice? Transgression of desolation. He tried and under. We lose your brother, Ben? I think we just lose him. I think because he's cutting off. It's kind of cutting his voice off in between scripture. I can see. I can see how that's working right by now. Yeah. You see that, brother, Ben? Yeah, something happened. Uh, I can go back up to 13. Uh, oh, um, there, there you go. Oh. Go ahead. Just start at 13, Brother Ben. And and said unto me, unto, unto 2,000 and no, right, days, right 13, right then here. shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Yeah, pick up right here at verse 13. Then I heard one of the saints speaking. Say again. Oh, read me 13. Right here, yeah, start at 13. Are you able to see it? I think you got a bad connection. The internet I is guess my... Yeah, something yeah. cutting up. I tell you what, Brother Ben, just disconnect from Zoom and get right back on. See if it's your connection. I don't know if it's... Okay, it says, and out of, out of one of them came forth a little horn. So y'all know we're just dealing with the beast. And we know that little horn came out of which kingdom? Babylon? No. Rome. Came, came out of the fourth kingdom. Very good. Came out of the last world kingdom, Rome. It says, and out of them came forth the little horn, which waxed exceeding great toward the south, toward the east, towards the pleasant land. And it waxed great and even to the host of heaven. And it cast down some of the host and of the stars to the ground and stamped up on them. Okay. Uh, yes, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host, and by him what? The daily sacrifice was taken away. Now, what do we know the daily sacrifice becomes? Us. Us. By this little horn, the daily sacrifice is taken away. Now, y'all got to get this. How do we sacrifice daily? By denying, denying. ourselves. By denying, denying ourselves. For what reason? For the sake of our brothers. In other words, y'all, for this to come true, this power is going to stop people from making sacrifices to please the Most High. 
If you try to please the most high, you will be taken away. You will be scattered. You will be a target. Don't you know you got to make these sacrifices to have your name in that book of life we studied about? Yeah. That's why and we have to pick up our cross, Daisy. There you go, mama. And watch this. And now you know who coming after me. He said he is going to take away the daily sacrifice. That's those people that are willing to deny themselves even to the point of death. That's what we want. Okay. Yeah. Watch this. And the place of what? Sanctuary was cast yeah, down. Sister Felicia, where is the sanctuary? The church. Uh, My bad. Yeah, you you close, Brother Shaw, but give me a look. You can give me a little bit better answer than that. Make it personal. It's oh, sorry. What you say, Brother Shaw? Now go ahead. Remember the Bible said, Brother Shaw, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Lord. The mm. temple of God. You remember what God told us that in Corinthians? <laughs> Listen, the place of his sanctuary will be cast down. That just so happened to be the same place of the daily sacrifice. Within us. You better believe me, brother. We got you. Yeah. See, this is what I mean when I say when you have the tools, you can break down prophecy. See, in the Old Testament, okay, like for instance, how many rooms was the sanctuary made up of, brothers and sisters? The holy place and the most holy place. Very good. Where is the most holy place today? In Hi. heaven. In heaven. And who's in the most holy place today? Jesus at the right hand of the Father. Who remembers what was in the most holy place as far as the furniture? The mercy seat. And the cherubim. The, 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 the covering cherubims. And who dwell between the two covering cherubims? God, 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 the, the Father did, right? And where Amen. did he tell us Jesus was today? At the, at the, right, hand at the right hand of the Father. At the right hand of the Father. Wow. Where? In a temple that was not built with what? Man's hand. Hands. And what room is that that he's in? The most, the most holy place. Then the, the question holy. is, where is the other half? Down here. Where? It's brother? us. And it's it's us. It's us. us. So watch this, y'all. Remember we just studied that parable about the, the wedding feast for the son? Y'all, listen. When Jesus and the people come together, that's the temple coming back together. You got the most holy coming together, and you got the holy. That's why he tell us we have to be holy. Amen. That would be the entire Amen. sanctuary coming back together, but in spirit and in truth. And guess what, y'all? We were not built by man's hands either. We were built by the spirit of God. Amen. 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 How many of you know God's spirit changed you? Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you Amen. know God's spirit did something on the inside, caused you to think different, talk different? Amen. Amen. You were not That's built by man's hands. Not at all. Now you, now you had to look at that from a you had to look at that from a spiritual uh you had to look at that spiritually. <laughs> well, that's why I'm always I, I try yeah. to find ways to articulate the Bible in a way that it can simplify for us all. And that's why I say when we read this stuff in the old testament, sometimes we're trying to be so deep. And it's it's more about knowing the symbolisms of God. But whatever he's showing us in the natural, like this. Daily sacrifice and sanctuary being cast down. It's got a bigger meaning. So if you're trying to look at it literal, you won't get it because God is a spirit. Amen. So so let's move. So Amen. he says, yes, and he magnified himself to the prince of hosts. And by him, by this little horn, the daily sacrifice was what? Taken away and the place of his sanctuary where people were really holy. They were cast down. Verse 12. And a host was given who? Him. Him. What? Against who? The us. daily sacrifice. Uh -uh. Amen. Which is us. He was given a host against 
the people that are trying to stand on this word. Y'all see the on y'all see the wall being set up? Oh yeah. This little horn is going to have a host given to him to go against the daily sacrifice by what? Reason of what? Transgression. And what is transgression? It's uh, iniquity. Yeah, it's Sin. Breaking, Sin. Yeah. breaking God's law. Mm -hmm. Watch this. And what did this little horn do? And it did what? Cast down yeah. the truth to the what? Ground. What did the Bible Some of us go. The Bible. Amen. John 17 and 17, y'all. I won't go over that for the sake of time. But he says, sanctify thy people through thy truth. Thy word, is, word truth. is truth. So he said that this little horn cast down the truth to the ground and it did what? Practice. Prosper. And not only did it practice casting the truth to the ground, but it prospers, y'all. You mean that some of us going to go to sleep? Meanwhile, that some of us going to go to sleep? Now, I need everybody to get this because I'm going to show y'all something that's today's time to show you is happening now. The host is being set up to come against the true believers. And if we are still... Uh, I don't want to beat up on you tonight. I want to encourage you. Give me the words, Lord. If, no, you're the truth, though. You're struggling. If we are not aware of where we are in this earth's history, you may be being one of the ones being invited to the wedding, but you're letting things distract you because you you have you you don't know enough to hey. understand the urgency. Amen. All of the signs are being put right in front of you, but you don't know it because you have not um, inquired of God to the point of you can see things that others can't. You're not working to call people to righteousness, so you can't see just how bad this world is when people struggle with the simple stuff of God. Amen. I'm talking about no prophetic deep stuff. I'm talking Amen. about you find some people that's got Jesus in their mouth. They can't swallow the simple things of God, the milk. Amen. So, so this little horn, y'all saw what he did. Verse 13, watch this. Then I heard one speaking, another saint unto the certain saint which spake, How long shall this vision? concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation, talking about tribulation, to give both the what? Sanctuary, Sanctuary. and the what? Host to be trodden under feet. Amen. And he said unto me, until the 2,300 days, he said, then shall what? The sanctuary be cleansed. After that. All right, let me show y'all something. Let me show y'all something. Let's see here. Give me just a second here. Let me put it over here on the big screen so y'all can see it. I sent this to a few people today. Sister Trudy, you got your hand up? Go ahead, sis. I'm sorry, I forgot to put it back down. Okay. All right, can y'all see this on the screen? Yes. Y'all see that title? Hope says Africans are a special case when it comes to the LGBT blessings. Mm. Can y'all see why I highlighted the date of this article? Yesterday. Two, yep, yesterday. 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 Do y'all know what? Y'all know where 
this power resides in the world? Y'all, are y'all aware that just so happens to be wrong? Now, Amen. now I, I preachers declare stuff all the time and they don't make the news. How come when he say something, it make the news? Because he the Antichrist. <laughs> I want you, uh, Brother Ben, or whoever don't mind reading. We're not going to read all of this article. We're just going to read down a little bit. But start right here at Vatican City. If you, if y'all, I'll make it a little bigger so everybody can see it. Y'all pay close attention. Remember, it said that not only it was given a host, but it cast down the truth to the ground. It practiced and prospered. Come on, go ahead. Pope Francis said in an interview published on Monday that Africans were a special case in the opposition of bishops and many other people in the continent to homosexuality. But he said he was confident that, except for Africans, critics of his decision to allow blessings for same-sex couples would eventually understand it. Blessings were allowed last month in a document called Fiduciae Supplicants. Uh, supplicating trust, which he caused widespread debate in the Catholic Church, with particularly strong resistance coming from. Man, I thought Brian, know who you. Were. So watch this. So the Pope declared a while back, about a month or so ago, y'all, that same-sex marriage was okay. The people in Africa said, "Oh no, not here." Okay. Okay. Amen. Now, now, first of all, how can a man of God change God's word? To exactly, because he's not a man of God. But he, but 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 now, Sister Felicia, I, I understand where you're coming from. But now, for us to under, uh, Lord, give me the words. I'm gonna say it like this. The prophecy that Daniel saw about the lion and the bear and the great dragon with great iron teeth came, I forgot we looked it up, but thousands of years. And in the prophecy of Daniel, Daniel told Belshazzar who would take over in power and who would be the world kingdoms and who would be the most dominant power in the last days. Mm -hmm. Why am I stressing this? The prophecy came thousands of years ago. Here it is. We all have grown up in church being told we're living in the last days. And the most dominant religious influence is the Roman power. Amen. Like Daniel said. Daniel just so happened to told us what he would try to do. Think to change times and laws. Amen. He's going to he cast down the truth to the ground. What's the truth? The word. Amen. He's going to practice, which means he's going to use it. It's going to be a way of life. And not only that, but he will prosper, y'all. And he will be given a host against the daily sacrifice. Do you know who the daily sacrifice is? That's those of us that's going to stand on the word. Amen. Amen. See, why I'm stressing this is because some of us have become lukewarm. God said he's going to spit the lukewarm ones out. Amen. Okay. And so watch this. He said, but he said, watch this. He said that Africans were a special case in opposition of homosexuality, but he said he was confident that except for Africans, critics of his decisions to do this, allowed a blessed same couple, would eventually what? Understand it. They're eventually going to accept it. Eventually. They're going to change their mind eventually. Everybody except the Africans. Watch this. Blessings were allowed last month in a document called I'm sure that's a Latin word, but it means supplicating trust. 
Now, how are you going to write a document to change God's word? But come on, let's move. Which he has caused widespread debate where? Within the Catholic Church, with particularly strong resistance coming from African bishops. Watch this. Those who protest vehemently belong to what? Small ideology. Small. Ideological groups. Come on, read that. Francis told the Italian newspaper L.A. Stampta a special case are Africans. For them, homosexuals, homosexuality is something bad from a cultural point of view. They don't tolerate it. But in general, I trust that gradually everyone will be reassured by the spirit of the fiduciary suppl su supplicants declaration by the whatever. For the doctrine of faith, it aims to include, not divide, the Pope said. I don't know if y'all caught the words. Watch this. Those who protest vehemently, vehemently belong to small ideological groups. It's just a small group of people. Francis told Italian newspaper La Stampa, a special case of for Africans. Watch this. For them, homosexuality is something bad from a cultural point of view. Not biblical, but cultural. Mm -hmm. Meaning you just know in that with that culture, I'm just here. Even folks that don't know God's word just know right from wrong because God wrote right and wrong on your heart anyway. People just know. You ain't got no, no Bible to know. Just like, well, I won't get into that right now for the sake of time. But he said it's based on culture. He says, in, he said, but in general, I trust that gradually everyone will be reassured by the spirit of who? And not God. The devil. It, ain't, it ain't saying the spirit of God, but it's something. Fiducia. Holy Spirit. But the spirit of a document that was put in place to say it was okay. Now watch the beauty of the word. I'm going to tell y'all something. He said like a lamb in sheep's clothes. He said to come like an angel of light, be like sheep clothing. In other words, y'all, I tell y'all this, stop looking for the devil to come with horns. God told you he's going to be like an angel of light. Amen. You're going to love him. Look how beautiful these words are. Amen. By the, that's, that, I'm not sure what that, that's, does anybody know that word? Uh, that's all right. The the castery is something that says for the doctrine of faith. Watch this. This, this, this um trust basically, what it's trying to do, it aims to include everybody, not to divide. Y'all, the word holy by itself is division. Mm. Amen. Amen. The word holy is division, but this declaration is to include, not to divide. Pope said. I won't get into all of it, but all I, all I want y'all to get from that is, watch this. How does he have the power to make a change such as that? Through a document. Did the Bible say don't add to nor take away? Amen. 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 So it's eight o'clock, y'all. They don't need to be opening another can of worms. That's enough to think about. Tonight. Like um, Bishop said, that time just goes so fast. Up. Yeah, I see your hand up, Brother Corbin. Go ahead. I was just going to say, um, he's already, um, like, there's been other bishops that's been speaking out against him in there. He already has communicated a couple of them from the Catholic Church for speaking out against him. The one of them called him a deaf. Yes, mm -hmm. and, and, and that's the thing, y'all. I want y'all to know there are people in every place that's got a heart toward God. Amen. But yeah, you that guy was actually out of Tyler, Texas, too. Amen. The truth is what divides, y'all. The truth is what exposes the hearts of people. Amen. And and like that whole inclusive thing, 
boy, you got to watch that subtlety. Because I'm going to tell y'all something. I'll tell you about me personally. I don't care what a person's lifestyle is. I believe they ought to be able to go to the hospital, get the best of care like anybody else. I believe they ought to be able to apply for whatever job they want to apply for. I believe they ought to be able to leave their stuff to whoever they want to leave it to. I believe they should be able to put insurance on whoever they want to. I only have a problem when you start saying things are okay that God said wrong. But I don't think just because they don't believe in God like me that anybody should be mistreated. So I'm inclusive too, right. to a certain point. Gotcha. Amen. Oh, hey, Pastor. Hey, I'm hey, I'm just it's just this one quick thing. You know, um, I don't know if you're missing at him much, but um he he one of his biggest words that he uses a lot is the fraternity. <clears throat> he yeah. he mentions that word a lot about getting people on a fraternity level with him. Yeah. Cause I'm gonna tell y'all this. I don't know if y'all you know how the Bible just said he was gonna be given a host. Did hey, anybody tell how his arm is being set up by moves like that? Mm -hmm. I'm going to show y'all how his arm is getting set up. Not only are the people that he has opened the doors for going to be behind him 100%. You have people that are not homosexual, no, not, don't practice homosexuality, right? But they have people that are homosexual that they love, and they don't have a problem with it. They're going to be on board. Yeah. Yep. Amen. And anybody that speak anybody that speak against it, yeah, it's on oh, your no, cartoons. No. It's everywhere. Yes, it is. You can't watch nothing without it being feminized anymore. Yeah, yeah. and, and the person. devil and, and the devil so subtle. I've been caught on the wrong. They all in your movies and everything. When you just start looking up stuff like little oh, stuff, like there. I was. Yeah, yeah, they've been there, Brother Johnny. But I want to encourage everybody as we close tonight, open your eyes and see through the spirit. Why is it that this topic is moving in everything you watch, everything? Why is it that the spirit of Jezebel is moving throughout the world today when he told us in Revelation, you allowed this woman, Jezebel, that called herself a prophetess? to seduce. And when you know what she practiced, you know this was a part of it. Singling out. Just trying to normalize it so people be numb to it and they just accept it. But when you don't have spiritual eyes to know it's a spirit moving in this world, oh, Lord. You it's going to sound like, it's going to sound weird to you, not just listening through your corner ears talking about yeah. something spiritual. Yeah, you can't Amen. speak that. Amen. So, okay, y'all, we'll pick up on Thursday. Do we have any questions or comments before we pray? I, I enjoyed y'all tonight. I hope uh, uh, <laughs> we went slow enough for us all to be able to understand. Uh, that's good uh -huh. word, Pastor. That's good that word, Pastor. I ain't almost, I almost didn't want this. I ain't want this to end, man. For real, I love stuff like this. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was deep and awesome. Yeah, you got me unmuted. It was so good. I want to hear it. <laughs> yeah, well, we're going we're gonna, to we're look a little deep on Thursday, Lord willing. So come on, y'all. Let's have a word of prayer and uh, we'll go from there. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in prayer, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity, Lord, to just let up pushing your word. Father, we pray nothing was said that's unpleasing your sight, Father. And again, Lord, we pray, Lord, that our hearts were in position to receive, Father. We pray, Lord, that you open up your word to us and continue, Lord, to discern to us your truths, Father, that we may grow, Lord, to be more like you, to be a blessing unto others, Father. We ask these things in your daughter and son, Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Love you, RJ. Amen.